he didn't tell you specifics about what happened. Is that true? Correct. But he did say that he had to do it. Is that right? Yes. I don't have anything. Kyle Rittenhouse defense team calling their own witnesses to the stand as the state officially rests its case and testimony has wrapped up for day seven of the Kyle Rittenhouse trial and Rittenhouse now faces one less charge than he did before. Fox 6's Angelica Sanchez is live with a breakdown of today's testimony and we're seeing this newly enhanced video of the first fatal shooting. Angelica. That's right, a lot to unpack here today. We, the longest testimony today came from the state's final witness, the person who conducted the autopsies for both men that were shot and killed. Yes, he had forward momentum. Deputy Medical Examiner Dr. Doug Kelly was the last witness for the state, testified on the autopsies of Joseph Rosenbaum and Anthony Huber. Huber was killed from a single gunshot wound to the chest, while Rosenbaum suffered four gunshot wounds, first to the hand and groin, and then shot in the head and back. The head injury was a graze wound, while the back injury was a lethal shot. Dr. Kelly testified the shooting was within four feet of distance. Just so the record's clear, my hand touching Rosenbaum was found with suit injuries that indicate he could have had his hand over the barrel. Dr. Kelly said he could not determine if Rosenbaum was trying to push the rifle or grab it. He testified the last two gunshots were caused when Rosenbaum was horizontal to Rittenhouse. The only way that the uh, trajectories of the gunshot wounds to the right side of the head and the back make sense is if he's more horizontal to the ground. Prosecutors indicated Rosenbaum was falling while the defense argued Rosenbaum was lunging. Newly enhanced drone footage was once again shown to the jury. It slowed down and zoomed in. It shows Rosenbaum following Rittenhouse before the teen spins around and fires his weapon. Rosenbaum falls and Rittenhouse runs around a vehicle. These are some of the clearest images of the first fatal shooting. The prosecution rested its case by the afternoon and the defense began to call its witnesses. The first was Nicholas Smith, a former employee of CarSource. He met Rittenhouse the night of the shootings. I said yes, I can, I can help him, I can watch over the building. Smith testified that the owner's sons had asked for help after a fire at one of their businesses. This contradicts testimony we heard last week from the owner's sons who said they never asked for assistance. Now, as we mentioned at the top, Rittenhouse now faces six counts instead of seven. The curfew violation violation charge was dismissed today. This was the less serious charge of everything that he was facing. The judge agreed with the defense that the prosecution did not show enough evidence on this charge prior to announcing that the state would be resting its case. Reporting live outside the Kenosha County Courthouse, Angelica Sanchez, Fox 6 News. Angelica, thank you.